My name is Rod, and I experience something beyond an out-of-body experience, something beyond what eyes can see. On October 2nd, I lived the most traumatic and revealing day of my life. My wife and I will celebrate three years of marriage in October, and in these three years, God has really worked in peculiar ways. The dreams that God brings to me can only come from Him, as no man could conceive such things. And God confirms this with His Word. The dream you are about to hear is truly a testimony from God. I suggest that, as you watch this video, you do not just see it as entertainment, but evaluate yourself and ensure that your house is in order for when God comes, because no one knows the day nor the hour. I had to do the same. I remember it was a Thursday, but let's go back to Wednesday night. I found myself watching various clips on YouTube about near-death experiences and different movies that used to scare me. They captured my attention and left me so scared that I wondered, God, is this real? I couldn't understand because I had never been to that place. That night, I found myself praying outside my apartment, pacing back and forth with my eyes closed, praying fervently. I asked God, Lord, if you give me an out-of-body experience, I promise to share your word and tell people what I saw. I didn't expect God to answer because I was just praying, not really looking for an answer. The next morning, Thursday, October 2nd, I had a dream in which my spirit left my body. It seemed like I was in my apartment and my spirit was pulled out. I traveled through transits of colorful and bright lights, like flashing lights, until I appeared before a cloudless blue sky. It was a blue place, without land, trees, grass, or water. There was nothing just a blue atmosphere that stretched for millions and millions of miles where nothing existed. Everything was revealed. Nothing was hidden. We were in a transparent body form which could be described as a soul or spirit and I could see through it. In front of me, there were thousands upon thousands like me and thousands behind me. I knew it was a form of soul. In the middle of my chest, there were several seeds, but I didn't know what they were for. I realized I was the only being that could move, look around, and observe. All my senses were active at that moment. I began to look around, observing everything I saw, not knowing that this was a dream. I thought it was reality, that it was really happening. In front of me, at the end of the line, there was a large shadow among thousands of people. It was a large, vague shadow without details, like vapor. I could see that it was the shadow of something ahead, and at that moment in the dream, with many questions in mind, I suddenly heard these words. In this portal, I don't quite know how to call it, to the right of God or Jesus Christ, depending on how you choose to identify this place of judgment, there was a large portal that opened. From it came stones of fire. It's like when you light a lighter and try to spark it, but instead of fire, stones leaked from this portal. And whoever was rejected by God was cast down from this place, and the stones were so hot that they burned all those outside the portal. On the left side of our bodies or forms, it burned so much that, as if it were very cold, you would tell someone to close the door. That was the heat. The portal closed and the condemned were sent so quickly that the screams came delayed. A delayed, ah, that terrified me. Suddenly, something snatched us up as if we moved forward in line and I began to think, not understanding where we were. My God, maybe this is the judgment. I had many questions and heard, depart from me, depart from me, as several people were sent to hell. What scared me the most were the people being judged. You could hear when God spoke to them and everything they were judged for. If someone was sent to hell for something you knew you also struggled with in your life, you knew where you were headed. I saw flames constantly burning all those who had not yet been judged and could hear some people talking to God. I remember a woman, blonde, and God was speaking to her. He said, I am not judging you for what you posted on Facebook but rather how it affected others. 300,000 people were led astray by one of your posts on Facebook. He said their blood was on her hands. I cannot express how powerful his words were. It seemed that when he said, depart from me, everything shook and she was thrown with great force into the portal, which closed, and her scream was so delayed it terrified me. People were judged for adultery, fraud, and many other things I could hear. The people in front of me were terrified because many of them had gone through the same situations and never repented. Then thousands were sent here and there, flying so fast I had never seen anything so swift. It was my turn to be next in line. 
he called me and began to speak with me. Keep in mind that our life follows us so closely that everything we did in our life testifies against us. You cannot lie because your life testifies. Yes, you did this. You did it at that time. Yes, you did. And whenever God spoke to me, a large screen appeared as if everything God said came to life. He began to tell me everything I could have done better. At that moment, I thought, okay, God, I could have done that better. I did okay, but it could have been better. He continued saying other things and brought up a specific woman. He asked me why I had not forgiven her. He gave me a specific name, which I will not mention, and I knew exactly what he was talking about. He asked me why I had not forgiven her. I replied, God, I have forgiven her. He questioned, if you forgave her, why, when you speak to her on the phone, do you treat her as if the situation had just happened again? I insisted, but I have forgiven God. He retorted, if you forgave her, why are there still these seeds in your chest? I looked down and realized, my God, that's what they are for. They are seeds of what I did in my life, the things I haven't forgiven. He continued talking to me and said that because I had not forgiven her, he also had not forgiven some of my sins. I was shocked. He began to tell me so many other things and still hadn't said anything good. At this point, I was terrified. My mind began to imagine how hot the fire would be when this portal opened. I was scared without words to describe the terror of meeting the Creator face to face, where nothing is hidden before Him, where all your inner thoughts and perceptions are revealed. I reached a point where I no longer wanted to hear God. I actually turned my head because I was afraid He had already decided my fate. I was so terrified that I turned my head and he continued to say everything I hadn't done right or what I should have done better. At that moment, I was convinced I was going to hell. I turned my head, not wanting to hear anymore, trying to imagine just how hot hell would be. I thought, oh God, if I go there, I can't come back. Please, God, don't send me there, I'm begging. I was more terrified than I can express. I turned my head and at that point, I didn't want to hear anything more he had to say because I knew I was going to hell. As I turned my head, suddenly, I felt something over the surface of my soul. I turned my head in slow motion, tears flying from my face and looked at God, waiting for my judgment. He looked straight at me and said, you didn't hear well done, you heard barely. He stepped back and said, come. At that moment, I was confused. To the left of God, a portal softly opened, radiating bright lights with indescribable colors, colors I had never seen before, incredibly beautiful and wonderful. The colors blossomed as they grew and the sky softly opened. I walked towards that portal and my hand passed through it and grew. My arm passed through and grew even more. It felt like I was growing into a mature state of a glorified body. My leg passed through and I grew even more. On the other side, I could see how much my body was transforming into a glorified body. Only my leg was left outside and just before my last foot entered, I woke up. The dream scared me so much that I stayed under the living room table for hours. I was terrified, afraid to move or do anything because I feared that it would be added to my judgment. I thought it was the judgment. It didn't feel like a dream. I could feel, I could taste. I could describe how it made me feel. Everything was so vivid in the dream. At that moment, I asked God, God, why did you give me this dream? He said it was because he wanted me to warn his people that the things I saw are things that will happen. I hadn't realized that in the prayer I made and the vow I made before God, he would fulfill it. Now he expects me to fulfill my part and that's why I'm speaking to you now, to forgive to let go. I cannot describe how many people let the lack of forgiveness grow within them and it causes bitterness, leading them to commit acts for which they were judged, acts that kept them from entering heaven. I was terrified so many people were going to hell, and it felt like I was the first to watch with thousands and thousands of people in front of me. That is scary to me. So today I encourage you to make things right with God, with your friends, enemies, heal wounds caused by the church that lead you to silently attack people. Go make it right because hell is not worth it. God scared me so much in that dream, but I know it was for a reason. Today, choose love. Accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. 
believe that he died on the cross for your sins and mine, and that he died but rose on the third day. Believe that he is the Son of God. Read the scriptures and apply them to your life, so that when Jesus returns, he doesn't see your flesh, but sees his word in you. I encourage you today, forgive, love, and see how God changes your life. Thank you for watching. Be blessed. Now, after hearing this powerful testimony, what will change in your life today? Are there seeds of bitterness that need to be uprooted? Or perhaps a forgiveness that you have been putting off? This is the time to reflect on these questions, as life is but a blink of an eye and judgment may be closer than we think. How are you living out your faith? Do your actions reflect the love and grace that have been bestowed upon you? I invite you to share your reflections in the comments below. Your experiences can inspire and encourage others to make the necessary changes in their lives. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to continue receiving messages that can transform your life. God has much more to reveal to you through His Word and testimonies like this. There was this very quiet and different boy who sat next to me, dressed in black and wearing occult jewelry, and began bringing dark books, like spell books, books on the third eye, and necromancy. But for some reason, I began to connect with these books, as if they wanted me to read them. But this time, it felt very different, like everything started moving in slow motion. I started seeing my friends in triple. My heart was racing really fast, and I fainted. It's like God is extending His love, His mercy, His grace over me, and saying, Daughter, I hear you. I've been trying to get your attention, but you weren't listening. Are you ready now? I am real, and I'm touching you right here. And I said, God, yes, I'm ready. Help me. If you felt moved by this testimony and want to watch this story and more stories like this, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Here, we share powerful experiences that can transform lives and strengthen faith. Click the subscribe button, activate the notification bell to receive updates, and join our community of faith and hope.